Advancing healthcare through private-public partnerships has become international best practice and plays a crucial role in how hospitals are now managed. PPPs can help create opportunities in a converging healthcare industry and are vital in addressing public health problems in North America and beyond. Here to make sense of it all is Mike Morasco, CEO at Plenary Group, and Dr. Ruben Devlin, President and CEO at Humber River Hospital. Ruben, Mike, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. Tell us about the vision. How did it all start? Humber River was a merger of three predecessor hospitals in 1997, three community hospitals that were serving the community for many years. And when we started to analyze what was happening, it was quite apparent that the facilities were inadequate for the needs of the community. So we went about studying what the future needs of uh, the community were, what future health care was going to be. And we came up with a new model of care and designed some vision principles uh, behind that. The first one was uh, a lean design to make sure that the resources of the hospital were well used and that it was an efficient design for the people working in the facility. Secondly was green uh, to uh, be environmentally friendly. Hospitals have used a lot of resources that way and uh, it was decided to make it as green as possible. And thirdly to use technology to its best advantage as an information tool to improve healthcare. So it became lean, green and digital to, uh, to drive the needs of our future hospital. Tell me more about the technology and the building design part of it. We looked at uh, the way hospitals were built now. Uh, we wanted not to design a building that was a bigger yesterday, but a better tomorrow. So we looked at uh, first at design. And what we saw were that uh, there were a lot of pinch points in hospitals. So most hospitals are designed so that everybody goes into the, through the same entrance and then everybody disperses trying to find where they're going. What we did was try and design a hospital that had people going in through different entrances. One is the emergency department, so we have a separate entrance for our emergency department. Second is our dialysis unit. Thirdly is our outpatient unit where it's designed through portals of care. People can drive up just like the airport and drop off at the clinic and get into uh, the building that way. And in fact, they'll have less steps to go to our clinics in the new building than in our current facilities. We saw technology as an information tool to help uh, our patients receive their information and also our healthcare providers, making their job easier. So uh, the healthcare record is available to the providers on, at an instant with information being pushed to them but also the patients will be able to access the record from home and also within the hospital. So if you've had a CT scan, an MRI, and you're in the hospital, you'll be able to pull that up and then the healthcare providers will be able to explain what has happened and the results of those tests. And Mike, this is a unique high profile project. Can you tell us what the process was behind it? It's very unique in that it's one of Canada's largest uh, acute care facilities and it's certainly going to be the most technically advanced when it's completed in 2015. Uh, we, we, we partnered with best-in-class partners that were best able to respond to Humber's needs both now and into the future. And based on their financial strength uh, and the security packages they put up and the robust uh, structure that we created, uh, we were able to obtain uh, an A rating for both Standard & Poor's and DBRS and that contributed to a very strong financing solution which at the end of the day uh, was very uh, instrumental in us winning the project. Uh, the financing solution was very unique uh, in that it was an all bond solution. This was a first for Canada. Uh, it consisted of, uh, of three tranches, a short tranche that, was, that will be taken out at substantial completion and then a combination of a long-term amortizer as well as a, a long-term bullet. And because there, there was more market capacity now for the debt, uh, we obtained better pricing. And as a result of that, um, we, we estimate that the savings were in the neighborhood of about 50 million, which contributed to, to the winning the project. Ruben, what made you decide to use alternative financing for this project? Hospitals uh, and all public sector uh, areas have a stress on infrastructure. Infrastructure needs are, are considerable now. We wanted a a, uh, a vehicle that was going to ensure sustainability. So this guarantees that our infrastructure is going to be taken care of for the next 30 years. And uh, this allows us to, uh, to then focus on what we do best is taking care of patients and uh, leave the experts on facilities management to do the rest. 
How do you see the future of private financing and healthcare delivery moving forward? I think private financing is going to be here to stay in the delivery of healthcare. Uh, certainly in Canada, Australia, I think it's making a comeback in the UK and it's certainly the prevalent procurement approach in parts of Europe as well. And I think it's largely due to the fact that people now realize that it isn't just about financing. In fact, it's financing acts as the catalyst for the risk transfer that occurs and more importantly the optimization of whole of life costs. Under a more traditional approach, the focus is on first in cost, which is actually quite, could be quite deadly in terms of the impact on your long-term operating costs for a hospital, because the, the, the first in cost account for somewhat uh, less than 10% over a 40-year life of a hospital. I think people are starting to realize the real value comes from that, and as a result, it's become the, the predominant procurement approach. And I'm even optimistic that we're going to start to see it in parts of the U.S., uh, certainly taken off in South America. So. I think it's here to stay. What have you learned from this process that could be shared with others who are likely to embark on a similar kind of project? Well, this is uh, one of, I guess, nine, nine in a row for us in terms of hospitals, and uh, there's certainly a, a lot of lessons for, uh, that I could bring forward. Probably the, the most important one, I would say, is that you know, be prepared in terms of the intensity of the process. You go through an, a, you know, a very disciplined process in a relatively short period of time, and, and even if both teams have adequately trained staff, I think the key to success is that they need to develop the chemistry and ability to work together first. And if they do that, then you're set up for success. So that would be, that would be one. The second one is uh, the importance of the evaluation criteria that the public sector chooses. If the criteria focuses solely on the capital cost and the, the maintenance costs without regard for the impacts on program operations, you could very well end up with a very good facility that, that costs a lot to operate from a programmatic perspective. So be careful what you ask for and make sure that there's a focus and emphasis on that. Ruben, Mike, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.